Once again, I'm enjoying a ride through southern Minnesota, and isn't this a beautiful part of the country? I just love going for these drives, and I'm amazed at the number of people that are running. So many people running in southern Minnesota. There must be some big race or something going on. And the number of people that are helping people run. Look at that. Here, I'm going to slow down and take a look here. Excuse me. Excuse me. Who? Are you helping someone run? Yes, I am. Who are you helping run? I'm helping my husband, Al Franken, run for the U.S. Senate. Well, can you stop, hop in the passenger seat and tell us all about it? I'd love to. Come on in. Thank you. I'm Jeff Rouse. I'm Franny Franken. Al Franken's wife. Yes, sir. Well, what a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. You know, we would like very much if we could take you to your next stop so you can meet up with Al. That would be terrific. And I'm going to uh, drive up there. If you want to tell Al that, I'll give you a ride up there. Sure. Honey, I'll meet you in Fairmont. Hi, Al. We'll be right back, I promise. Okay, we're just going to drive up here. Let's take a spin. This is a beautiful day, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's just gorgeous. We couldn't ask for a, a nicer day. Now, tell me what you think of Southern Minnesota. And I know you're from... I'm originally from Maine. Maine? Yes. So, uh, but I became a Minnesotan on September 19th, which is tomorrow, 1969. So Al and I are celebrating 39 years from the day we met. Well, wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. So uh, let me ask you this. Uh, you've had a very exciting, i got to remember to drive once in a while, okay. too, because people let me know i got to drive, yeah. but I'm going to take a little break. Uh, people ask all the time, I'm sure, what that Al has done, because you've, you've had a very interesting life with him. Certainly with, have. Uh, Saturday Night Live, mm -hmm. uh, the, the radio show, uh -huh. the books, uh -huh. and now running for Senate. Correct. Tell me, which one of those do you think was the most exciting? Well, they've all been exciting, and, but this is uh, a real privilege and an honor uh, to be doing this. And we have been so uh, graced with meeting folks, finding out what kind of problems they're having, listening to them, seeing what's working in their lives and what isn't. And Al believes that the country has been headed in the wrong direction, mm -hmm. and he wants to change that. Well, wonderful. Tell me, where did you meet Al? Well, I met Al, as I said, 39 years ago. 39 years. To, at tomorrow. <laughs> and it was at a college mixer in uh, Boston. And uh, uh, at the time, this was 1969, Al and I are not real nightlife people. Right. And uh, so I was talking to my girlfriends at this dance and suggesting that we leave and go back to the dorm and maybe play some cards. Sure. And I noticed that there was a young man uh, listening in on my conversation. And when I turned, I saw how very cute he was. He has a dimple and a beautiful smile. <laughs> and he had a name tag that was unlike anybody others. And it said Al on it. And he had glasses. And uh, everybody else was in a pinstripe suit. And I can remember this as clear as a bell exactly what he was wearing and I was just so charmed by him that I kind of said, well, here's what I said and it was a little bit flirty now in retrospect, <laughs> but I said, uh, you know, it's not nice to listen in on people's conversations. So he just smiled and said, all right, and he turned around, but he, by his body language, he made it uh, very apparent that he was still listening. And I was just charmed by him. There was just something so sure. sweet and adorable about him. And then he asked me to dance. He bought me a ginger ale. Uh, he escorted me back to my dorm with his seventh grade friend from uh, St. Louis Park, Dave Griffin. And he asked me for a date. And our first date was walking the Freedom Trail um, in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, and the path of Paul Revere, one if by land, two if by sea. And that was the perfect first date for us because we both have shared a passion for politics and history. So that brings a good question up. Just what you just said, both of you had the same passion from the very beginning for yes, politics? Yes, sir. I, my earliest memory of participating in a campaign was when I was seven years old and I remember holding a sign for a candidate. 
And I just remember that so clearly really? and being so proud to be able to do this. Sure. So tell me just a little bit about uh, the, the Saturday Night Live years. Well, uh, we were very young, and sometimes I call that uh, uh, beginning of Al's career um, the Beverly Hillbillies go to New York. <laughs> Because uh, we were 23 and 24, and New York was just a big city. Sure. And we knew Al wanted to work in TV, but it was particularly exciting because Saturday Night Live was the first show of its kind in years Absolutely. and years and years, a live variety show. Mm -hmm. And it was just uh, an exciting time in our life. Uh, the original cast members, Chevy Chase, Jane Curtin, Gilda Radner, Lorraine Newman, um, John Belushi, uh, just were all, we were all very excited about what we were doing. We were all united about it. And probably what a lot of people don't know is that uh, uh, Jane already had a young daughter, so she always went home faithfully every night. Sure. And Lorraine and Jane and I used to have uh, slumber parties in our flannel <laughs> nightgowns and uh, play Scrabble and eat popcorn. That's great. Yeah. So. Uh, and going a little bit forward yeah. uh, with the radio show mm -hmm. and the book and the books. Yes. Uh, how was that experience for the family? Well, uh, you know, we've always done everything as a team and mm -hmm. as a family. Mm -hmm. And when Al started uh, writing his books, even our kids got into the act. Really? And uh, because Al would write from home and they would watch him on the computer. And our son and our daughter who, uh, let's see, how old were they at the time? Maybe, you know, 9, 10, 11, sure. 12, 13, 14, in, in that range. And they would make suggestions to Al. And it was very sweet. And they learned about writing a book and that working at home, uh, you have to be disciplined. That's right. And that writing isn't such an easy thing to do, that it takes time and it takes work. Sure. Now, you mentioned a boy and a girl. Yes. Uh, today, they are? Well, our daughter is 27 years old, and she is a teacher. She taught third grade in an inner city school for three years, but became discouraged by No Child Left Behind. She's since uh, changed her field to early education, and she's working part-time right now uh, on in an early education program, and full-time volunteer uh, for her dad, and she's absolutely terrific. Our son is 23. Uh, he actually is a mechanical and aerospace engineer, mm -hmm. and he's working in a slightly different field. He works in New York, but he's actually um, arriving here this weekend because he and Al have tickets to the Vikings. Oh, of course. How exciting. So, Mom got ditched. <laughs> That's My husband exciting. threw me over for my son. <laughs> right. Now, let me ask you this, uh, and you kind of touched on it a little bit. What do you think Al brings to the Senate that Minnesotans, us in southern Minnesota, would like to know? I think Al will bring a different kind of a voice uh, to the public debate. And by that, I think that he will cut through all the gobbledygook mm -hmm. and be able to really define what a piece of legislation is about, how it's going to help people. Okay. And one of the things that he wants to do, the reason why he's running, is he wants to restore working families to the prosperity that he experienced growing up in St. Louis Park. Because Al remembers what it was like when Minnesota was number one in education. Mm -hmm. He remembers when employers flocked here because they knew that they had an educated war workforce, but they also know that they had a workforce with a very strong work ethic. He also remembers when you could get a world-class education in Minnesota's public schools. A dad could have one job, you could have a modest home, you could have a car, you might take a couple of vacations, or you might even have a mod modest cabin on the lake. Sure. So these this is how Al remembers life being. It's gotten off the track, and he wants to level the playing field and make sure that we little people uh, receive uh, a, fair, a fair shake sure. uh, in life in order to prosper 
and see to the education of our children and taking care of our parents. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you for being in the passenger seat. For our viewing audience, I know I haven't drove very much, but this has been very interesting. We've really enjoyed having you on the show. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take one more turn up here. Okay. Uh, and so you can join Al in, in running. Yes. And uh, I don't remember which way to turn. Could you share with me, do I turn left or do I turn right? Well, actually, I think we do neither. Neither. Exactly. I think we have to find a new way back. Because that's what this campaign is about. It's meeting people in the middle and turning the country around. And that's why I don't think we need to turn right or turn left. We need to find a new path to our destination. Very nice. Thank you very much for oh, being in the passenger seat. Thank you so seat. much. It was so pleasant. And this is Jeff Rouse for In the Passenger Seat. Bye bye.